नमो भगवते Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 1, Verses 22 and 23. So we shall turn the 22 together. Muraiva Pusha Mrito Dala Jaru Muraiva Pusha Demons assert themselves 
to the independent kings and presidents, and thus they create a disturbance by increasing their military power. When such disturbances are very prominent, Krishna appears. At present also, various demonic states all over the world are increasing their military power in many ways. And the whole situation has become distressful. Therefore, Krishna has appeared by his name in the Hare Krishna movement, which will certainly diminish the burden of the world. Philosophers, religious, and people in general must take this movement very seriously. For man-made plans and devices will not help bring peace on earth. The transcendental sound Hare Krishna is no different from the person Krishna. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vibraha Guruna Sudha Nitya Mukta Bina Tum Nama Namino Pagupurana. There is no difference between the sound Hare Krishna and Krishna, the person.
who was already aware of the distress and death. Consequently, for as long as the Lord moves on earth to diminish its burden by its own potency in the form of time, all of you, demigods, should appear through plenary portions as sons and grandsons in the family of the Yanis. So thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to render some service to the glories here in Govardhan. Uh, so uh, before I say anything, I want to request the blessings of all these wonderful Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis assembled here this morning so that I can say something for my own purification and probably for the benefit of the devotees. So Krishna does Kaviraj prays in the Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Druga me pati me indasya skalat pada gati mahur. Swayat kripa dhanena santa santu avalambalam. So, Krishna Das Kaviraj is praying for the mercy of the devotees. Santa Santu Avalambalam. We need the support, the stick of support from the devotees. Without the devotees, we are nowhere. Actually, without the mercy of the Vaishnavas, we are nowhere. Now we are sitting in Govardhan. How did it happen? Only by the mercy of a great devotee of the Lord that people like me can sit near Govardhan. So it's only by the mercy of the devotees of the Lord that we can make some progress in Krishna consciousness. So we always need the mercy of the devotees in order to make progress in our Krishna consciousness. So therefore, Shla Krishna Das Kaviraj is demonstrating that we must always be praying for the mercy of the Vaishnavas in whatever we do, because that mercy is our strength. Because we are seeing devotees every day, we are engaged in sadhana. Every morning in the assembly of devotees, we are inspired to chant Hare Krishna. We are inspired to perform services. So we always need the mercy of devotees in order to execute devotional service. Even Krishna himself loves to be among his devotees. That is one of the special qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So therefore, um, Krishna Das Kaviraj prays that we must always seek the mercy 
of the Vaishnavas. So please, bestow your kind mercy on me this morning so that I can discharge this sacred service of trying to repeat the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in the Chaitanya Charita Amrita, Krishna Tuliya Bhagavata Vibhu Sarvashraya. Prakti Shloke Prakti Akshare. Hmm? Nana Akara Kaya. Thank you. Nana Akarakaya. That Shrima Bhagavatam is wonderful. Shrima Bhagavatam is non different from Krishna. Shrima Bhagavatam is as beautiful as Krishna. Shrima Bhagavatam is as sweet as Krishna. And in the words of Shrima Bhagavatam, we can find a multifaceted meanings. So, in other words, Srimad Bhagavatam is unlimited, just as Krishna is unlimited. In another verse in Chaitanya Bhagavat, again, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. He says, Prema Maya Prema Maya Bhagavata Krishna Sri Angam. That Shrima Bhagavatam is full of Prem. Shrima Bhagavatam is full of love. Shrima Bhagavatam is full of wonderful Prema for Krishna because it's not different from Krishna. So anytime we have the opportunity to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, anytime we have the opportunity to read, to read Srimad Bhagavatam, we must understand that actually we are in touch with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So every day, Srila Prabhupada has designed that every blessed day we have that opportunity to hear Shema Bhagavatam. What a glorious activity that Shema Prabhupada has designed for us. That every blessed day of our lives, we are hearing Shema Bhagavatam. That is the perfection of this human form of life. One who has got his human form of life must engage this body in the glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which begins with hearing Shravanam, Kirtanam, Shmaranam. So here, Lord Brahma is speaking to the demigods that before we submitted our pet petition to the Lord, he was already aware of the distress on earth. Consequently, for as long as the Lord moves on earth to diminish his burden by his own potency in the form of time, all of you demigods should appear through plenary portions as sons and grandsons in a family of the Yadus. So, Krishna is known by many, many names. Krishna is known as Vishravit.
which means he knows everything happening within the entire cosmic manifestation. Vishra Vid. Vishra means the universe and Vid means no, knowledge. So Krishna knows whatever is happening in any corner of the creation, Krishna is aware. He is also known as Ananta Virya Sarvagya. Ananta Virya Sarvagya means that everything is known to him. Everything. There is nothing unknown to Krishna. Whatever is happening in any part of the creation is known to Krishna because he is all pervading. In Brahma's prayers, Brahma described Krishna as Sarvam Tvam Vetsi Sarvadrik, which means he is the knower of everything and the seer of everything. He is the knower of everything and he is also the seer of everything. So nothing remains unknown to, to the Lord and nothing can be hidden from the Lord. Sometimes the living entity has the tendency to think that we can hide certain things from the Supreme Lord. That is impossible. There is nothing we can hide from the Supreme Personality of God. He's, he's, he, he, he sees everything. He knows everything. Actually, in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, everywhere are my eyes, everywhere are my ears, everywhere are my legs, everywhere are my hands. So the Lord is everywhere. So here Brahma is telling the demigods, that even before they submitted their prayer to the Lord, he was already aware of the distress taking place in the earthly planet. Therefore, Krishna descends into the material world to rectify the difficulties the living entities are experiencing, especially the devotees. Paritranaya saduna vinasaya chaduskritam, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that whenever there is an increase in such demonic activity to the point that the devotees are so distressed, Krishna appears in the material world. And when he appears, he gives comfort to the devotees. He protects the devotees. And simultaneously, he annihilates the demons. Therefore, in the in the Mukunda Mala Strata, it is nicely described. Jayati Jayati Devo Devaki Nandana So. Jayati Jayati Krishna Vrishni Vamsa Pradipaha Jayati Jayati Mega Shamala Kamalango Jayati Jayati Priti Bharanaso Mukundam Jayati Jayati Priti Bhara Nasho Mukundam now Krishna 
as Lord Mukunda, he destroys the burden of the earth. Priti Bhara. The burden of the earth is removed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And actually, no one is capable of removing the burden of the earth. No one. As La Prabhupada has mentioned in his purport, that no material arrangement or no material device can remove the burden of the earth. Only Krishna can remove the burden of this earth. And so Srila Prabhupada nicely states that the Hare Krishna movement, Krishna has incarnated as a Mahamantra in his holy name in the Hare Krishna movement. And only by the activities of the Hare Krishna devotees can the burden of the earth be diminished. So this is very interesting. How can the Hare Krishna movement diminish the distress of this earth? So Shri Prabhupada quotes this verse from Padma Purana. Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Sudo Nitya Mukto Bhinatwam Nama Namino now, there is no difference between the sound vibration, Hare Krishna, and Krishna, the personality himself. So in other words, as devotees chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we are actually invoking the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Kali Kalira Nama Rupi Krishna Avatar. That in Kali Yuga, the holy name of the Lord is the incarnation of the Lord. And simply by chanting these names, one directly associates with Krishna. And anyone who does this is already delivered. So in Kali Yuga, Krishna incarnates as his holy name. And so by chanting the holy name, the effect of Krishna's presence is actually realized. In a commentary on the holy name, Shilajiva Goswami says, Yadhyanya Bhakti Kalo Karatavya Kritanakya Bhakti Sam Yoga Naiva Itukam. That out of the practices of Sadhana Bhakti, Nam Sankirtan is the best. Indeed, Kirtan is better than Shravanam and smaranam. Why? Because the living entity material existence is completely deprived of Krishna consciousness. It is mentioned that a fire of material existence burns the intelligence of the living entity. So much so that a living entity forgets Krishna. He does not only forget Krishna, he forgets his own identity. 
And then the living entity identifies with his physical environment. And so because of this diminished intelligence caused by the fire of material existence, the living entity has no idea what his relationship is with the eternal world of Krishna. Therefore, the holy name, which is not different from Krishna, descends into this material world and allows the living entity to associate with the holy name. And in fact, it is said that in a conditioned state, our hearts are oozing with the stench of material desires. And so the heart is unsuitable for Krishna to, to live, to stay in. But the holy name does not discriminate. The holy name allows everyone to associate with him. So by chanting the holy name, in other words, it says the holy name picks up a broom, enters the heart of the living entity, and sweeps the heart clean. And when the heart is nicely cleansed, then Krishna sits in that heart and transforms the life of the living entity. So therefore, Shana Prabhupada is quoting this verse that by associating with the holy name of Krishna, we can actually feel the presence of Krishna in this world. Furthermore, it is said that hearing about Hearing about the Lord through the lips of the devotees is compared to tying Krishna with a silken thread in the heart. And Krishna can easily break away from that silken thread and go away. Meditation on the past times of the Lord, where the chief of the senses, the mind, is involved, is compared to tying Krishna with ordinary ropes that are used in tying cows. And that also, Krishna can easily break away and go away. But when one participates in kirtan, when one engages in the loud chanting of the holy names of the Lord, that is compared to binding Krishna with iron chains. And when Krishna is bound with iron chains, Krishna cannot break away. Krishna stays. In other words, when we perform kirtan, That actually binds Krishna to our hearts. In the book, Kirtan, Asian, Med Asian Medicine for Modern Man, Hamsa, Hamsa Dutta Prabhu says that during Kirtan, there is no thinking. The mind is always active. The mind is always going here and going there. The mind is always planning, is always programming so many things. That is the nature of this mind. Manodharma. That's the nature of the mind. But that mind can be arrested only during kirtan. When one engages in loud chanting of the holy names of the Lord, then kirtan, then the mind can be arrested during this kirtan. Therefore, during kirtan, there is no thinking. 
And we can see that the whole pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was centered around this principle of Sankirtan. During his life, his pastimes in Navadvip, day in and day out, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would organize very big, big Harinams. During the day, he would engage in Harinams. And at night, he would engage his very intimate devotees in Srivas Angam, and they would chant all night. So practically, the Lord demonstrated the whole day he's engaged in cure time with the masses and masses of people. And then at night, he selects a few intimate devotees and again engages in cure time. Similarly, we see when Mahaprabhu relocated in Jagannath Puri, his daily activity was cure time. Even when the Lord travels to South India, Every day, he simply engaged in kirtan. When he went through Jarekanda Forest, he was simply immersed in chanting the holy names of the Lord. So much so that when the wild animals, they saw the Lord in that ecstatic mood, they were influenced. And they also joined in the Lord's kirtan. So that is the religious activity for this age of Kali. Shukadeva Goswami mentions in the Shuma Bhagavatam, Tasmat Sankirtanam Vishnu Jagan Mangalam Amhasam Mahantam Api Kauravya Vidi Akaintika Nishkritam. That, my dear king, the chanting of the holy name of Krishna is able to uproot even the reactions of the greatest sins. Therefore, the chanting of the Sankirtan movement is the most auspicious activity in the entire universe. Please try to understand this so that others will take it seriously. So in other words, we have the greatest gifts, the holy name of Krishna. And we are in the best of places, Giri Govardhan. So why don't we take the best opportunity to go back home, back to God? We have the best of gifts, the holy name of the Lord. We are in the best of places, living near Giri Govardhan. So why don't we take the, this opportunity, this rare opportunity to go back home, back to Godhead. For many lives, we have had many bodies. This is not the first body. This is not the second body. We have had millions of bodies. But we did not take advantage of those bodies. But in this life, somehow or the other, by the wonderful Mercy of Srila Prabhupada. Here we are, living in Giri Govardhan, living near Giri Govardhan. Actually, it is said that Giri Govardhan is not different from Radha and Krishna. It is actually very, very sacred. Every spot, every place is a place of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is said, Govardhan is the manifestation of Radha and Krishna. When we see Giri Govardhan, we should immediately understand that we are seeing Radha and Krishna. So here we are, very close to Govardhan. Here we are, with this very wonderful incarnation of the Lord, the Hare Krishna mantra, which just Tolerate any inconvenience, any inconvenience, just for this one life. Shri Prabhupada told some devotees that just for this one life, sacrifice it for Krishna. We have wasted so many lives 
But just for this one life, let us sacrifice it for Krishna and the results will be very wonderful. We go back home, back to Godhead. So the second verse, which is verse 23, says, Vasudeva Grihe Shakshat Bhagavan Purusha Paraha Jain Shanti Tat Priyatam Sambhavantu Surastriyaha The Supreme Personality of God is Sri Krishna, who has full potency, will personally appear as the son of Vasudeva. Therefore, all the wives of the demigods should also appear in order to satisfy him. So, the wives of the demigods are ordered to appear in Brindavan, just as the demigods have been ordered to appear in the family of the Yadus. So here, the wives of the demigods are asked to appear in Vrindavan, where Krishna would appear as a son of Vasudev. So why are the demigods, the wives of the demigods, asked to appear in Vrindavan? Vrindavanam govadam yamuna pulinani cha. Viksha Siddhi Uttama Priti Rama Madhavayo Nripaha. The O King Parikit. When Rama and Krishna saw Vrindavan, Govardham, and Yamuna River, they were very much happy because these personalities, Govardhan, Vrindavan and Yamuna actually descended from the spiritual sky. So Krishna arranges in every universe to have his playground. And so in this universe, this, play, this place is the playground of Krishna. And Krishna continuously performs his leela, his nitya leela. He is constantly taking birth as a son of Devaki. And he is constantly in, enjoying with the cowhead boys, enjoying with the gopis, enjoying with the elderly cowhead men and cowhead women. So therefore, Krishna is ordering the wives of the demigods who have engaged in devotional service somewhere along the line to now appear in Vrindavan to be trained to know how to serve the Lord nicely so they can return home when Krishna is leaving the material world and going back home, back to Godhead. It is said that when a living entity attains perfection, he does not immediately go back home, back to Godhead. He actually waits until the Lord performs his pastimes in one of the universes. There he joins the Lord, and then he's trained up by the intimate associates of the Lord, and then he perfects his devotional service, and when the Lord is going back home, everyone goes along with the Lord. So here, it is said that the wives of the demigods are ordered to appear here because they are actually perfected devotees and they are waiting to be trained to go back home, back to Godhead. And that is why they have been ordered to appear in Vrindavan. So we can see how important this Vrindavan Dam is. That one can attain perfection in the association of Krishna by taking birth in Vrindavan. So we have not taken birth in Vrindavan, but somehow or the other, by the mercy of the pure devotee, now we are in Vrindavan. 
So therefore, whatever inconveniences, whatever austerities we are going through, we should simply accept them as the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, understanding that living near Govardhan is the greatest gift one can ever have. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gifted his Govardhan Shila to Raghunandas Goswami. And Raghunandas Goswami understood that the Lord wanted him to stay in Govardhan. So after the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Raghunandas Goswami, he shifted to Govardhan and he stayed here and performed severe austerities to please the Lord. And there are many stories how many devotees have stayed here and they perform severe austerities. So living by Giri Govardhan means we must be ready to live such a life to please Giri Govardhan, to please Krishna. And the result is we go back home, back to Godhead. So the wives of the demigods are ordered to come into Vrindavan to attain perfection, to, to be trained up in Krishna's service and go back home, back to Godhead. Hare Krishna.